Raul was in over his head with Claudia. Don't oh you think? Oh my gosh. I felt yeah. so bad for him. She's scary. She scared me because she was looking right through you. Mm -hmm. She had no remorse for yeah. setting men up and robbing them, committing major felonies. Those are life felonies, robbery. Yes. And, and it was like, yeah, I, I just, what was it? I finesse them. I'm like, what? Yes. And yes. I robbed them. And, like, and just that idea of invincibility, that somehow she was going to, you know, escape unscathed every time. I mean, you don't think some guy's going to lash out when you try to take his money? And she's an itty bitty girl. Yes, very tiny. They could have guns. They could, who knows? You and, know. And here's poor dad. Not a clue. What do I do? Yeah. What did I say? Where did I go wrong? What can I do? Can you help me? Right. Um, she she's uh, frightening, and she uh, you're the professional, but she scared me. And yeah. I I'm hoping somebody can get to her. Somebody can get her either on the appropriate medication yeah. or change that line of thinking. Yeah, I was definitely worried about her because I know that dad said she has borderline personality, and I said. Dad, she's got more than that. She probably has antisocial personality. And that's the kind of personality trait that we usually associate with psychopath or sociopath. Those are like different colloquial ways that we refer to that, which means that the person has no remorse, feels like other people are out just for you to use as pawns. Right. And they don't really have empathy. They have very kind of shallow emotions just to kind of get you to come to right. their side. And all of that other stuff that happened early in her teens, the substance abuse, the stealing, the robbing, it's all classic antisocial personality. And with those individuals, they're harder to reach. It doesn't mean that you can't reach them forever, but it's just much harder because they think everybody else is to blame and they have right. no, really no, no wrongdoing on their part. And you can see that in her it, eyes. And it was frightening. I, I've yeah. never seen anybody so cold. And one time I had a murder case mm -hmm. and I asked the guy, why did you do that? And he just looked right at me and he said, because I could. Yes, yes. You know, and that's what I saw that's kind of in what her. what she said. Yeah. Didn't she just say, yeah. because, I, because I can. I yeah, can because I can. Again. Because I can. Yeah. Why would you do, because I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One day she's going to get seriously hurt. I hope not. But if she continues on that path, yeah. that's what's going to happen. Somebody's going to come up and be a little bit smarter than her. Do you think she blocked out some trauma? Because we asked her about that. I and think a lot of trauma. I think she's got a lot of underlying issues uh, yes. that she needs to deal with. Yeah, and Dad didn't know her when she was younger, but he suspects it. He says something happened to this girl. And Dad right? is like, I don't know what to do now. Well, yeah, because at this point, she's an adult. Right, and, and he, he can't do really a whole lot. No. I felt bad for him. Uh, yeah. Just so many parents out there that just need answers. Where do we go? What do we? Yeah. And there is help. You've got to look for it. You've got to seek it out. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of organizations that'll you just get on the phone and just keep calling until you get your answer as to where to go. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't it shocking at the end though when she said that she came here to get help for substance abuse? Yes, that was kind of amazing. Yeah, I didn't expect her to say that. Yeah, that so I hope I hope she went to that therapy. Was a step forward. You yeah, know, maybe I, that was a step. Forward. I hope she went. Oh, she said she said I'll quit everything except marijuana. Yes, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. No. You know. Sober, sober. Yes. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your sober anniversary. 16, 16 years. years. Oh, my fast. I'm so happy for you. That's so cool. I mean, what do you tell people when they show up and, you know, you see sort of where their struggle is and you've, you've been there? Like, do you talk to them sort of on their level and say, I've been there Here's what you need well, when I was when I was sitting on the bench, I mean, they I would tell them things that I knew how they lived their life. Like, mm -hmm. where you woke up in the morning, and the first thing you did is, do I have enough drugs to get me through the day? Do I have enough alcohol to get me through the night? When I, you know, oh my gosh, you ahead. know, will I be able to have enough to get to sleep with? You know, wow. so you, they would look at me and say, how do you know that? Mm. You know, but you get that mindset where you're planning to be able to be okay because if you didn't I didn't get a drink to go to sleep and get myself into sleeping mode mm -hmm. oh man I was gonna be a mess um, and when you can share those experiences with people in a in a in, in a honest way mm -hmm. and say listen I was there yes. and now I'm not yes I did it you can do it. it's possible yeah it, and it's possible for everybody but yeah. you can't just take like losing weight. It's not going to happen in a week. Right. You take, when you're a, an alcoholic or you're an addict, you take one minute at a time if that's what you need to be. Wow. Like, what am I going to do the next minute? What am I going to do the next hour? You know, you just, even one day is too much. And that's a great statement on just the importance of mindfulness when you're going through recovery. And as time progresses, you lose track because you said to me, don't you have something? I'm like, what is she talking about, an anniversary? <laughs> you know, you lose track of it because it, it's not... 
it's important, yeah. but you're not dwelling on it anymore. Right, you're not sort of on the edge, teetering right. about right. to, you know. Hey, you want to go and have celebrate right. my 16 years of sobriety? <laughs> and Let's go, go have a drink. drink. Yeah. That would be yeah. a bad example. So, but uh, <laughs> no, it's a good feeling. You know, yeah, people. That's great. You know, you say to people, I would always say to them, what you got to do, what food do you like really hate to eat? And mm -hmm. I hate to eat liver. I will never eat liver again. So mm -hmm. somehow you got to convince yourself that you hate alcohol that much mm -hmm. or you hate drugs because of what it does to you, how yeah. it makes you feel, how it's destroying other lives. Yeah. And you got to hate it so much yeah. that you're not constantly thinking about it. That's a great idea. It's kind of like a mind retraining thing. Yeah. Where you just sort of, you know, it's like a Jedi mind trick. Right. Okay, Mary. Yeah. That's good. I and now to get it. to sleep, I just exercise until I'm ready to fall out. You know, I walk <laughs> mile after mile after mile when I'm all worked up. Yeah, um, that's but, awesome. You know, and you drink your diet cherry cokes. My diet cherry coke. It tastes <laughs> like blackberry brandy. Oh yes, my god. My favorite. Awesome. Great tip for people out there yeah. who are trying to find, get back find into a routine. <laughs> you can do it.